So the question about who God is and how we as Baptists are called to worship him, I think in an age where people are aware of identity as being both a political, theological, spiritual question, it is good to go back to a biblical understanding of how God presents himself. So God presents himself or wants to be known as Father. Why? Because he's loving, he's kind, he's merciful. You know, my picture of, of, of God is of this father sitting on a rocking chair, just waiting for us to turn to him so he can gather up his, his skirts and run to us and grab us and kiss us and hug us. I, I love that picture of God as father. And that's a picture that Jesus seeks to embed in the consciousness of his disciples. So as, as Baptists, I think it, it's good to remember that God isn't just this almighty being who sits on the throne in heaven but he wants us to see him as a loving father who cares about every single one of us in terms of worship i mean that that's really easy you know worship essentially is love responding to love what worship is is a state in which we're called to commune with the divine to recognize him for who he is now I, I love the idea that worship doesn't just include singing, and, and that's true, but essentially, at the heart of, of genuine worship is the recognition of the Father's worthiness to be praised, to be adored, to be magnified. And if what we're doing, we're doing because of that, then it's worthy and it's worship. If, if you know, whatever our works are, whatever we're doing, if what we're doing is because we're seeking to bring glory to God, to honor him for who he is, then that indeed is also praiseworthy. Worship for me is always about love, responding to love. I can love him in everything I am and do because he loves me. Well, the first thing that's clear is we need to we need to reflect. And that reflection is happening right across the board. And, and in it, God will be saying different things to different people about their response and their calling. And that's what it boils down to. What are you called to do? If we're just trying to get a collective or a, a meta-narrative that serves nobody, what really serves is to understand what he's saying to me personally. That way I can make a difference. That way I can change the environment in which he places me. And as Baptists, that has got to be our focus. What's God saying to you? I believe one of the frustrations of heaven is that we don't understand that everybody's a pioneer. Not just the experts. It's important that every Baptist understand that Jesus has already made you a pioneer. When he said, go into all the world, and preach the good news to our creation. He wasn't talking to experts, he was talking to disciples, and you're a disciple. I would love to see our Baptist family reconnect with its roots, pioneering roots, and empower ordinary members, if there is such a thing as ordinary, ordinary members of our community to dare to believe that they can transform the world, because that's what they're called to do. We're all called to change the world. Some of us will be noticed, some of us won't be noticed. It's of no consequence. What's important is that we're doing what God asks us to do. And what's important is that people are empowered to pioneer and, and to make a difference. God's mission is stated clearly on the lips of Christ. What should our Baptist family be about? Go into all the world and preach the good news. The good news of His coming. The, the good news of his return, you know, the good news of his death and burial and resurrection. The gospel, the Bible tells us, is the power of God unto salvation, nothing else. At the heart of mission is the gospel. And, and I would ask, please reflect, ask the question, in what way, apart from our great works that we must do, and I'm so thrilled and blessed and pleased that Baptist churches up and down the country are engaged in doing practical, charitable good works, which is making a difference in people's lives. Nevertheless, 
my appeal would be, if we're going to see a revival in our nation, at some point, in some way, at some part of our activities in which we're trying to connect with the lost, we must proclaim Christ. What should the church look like? Well, it should look like an empowered bunch of people. It should look like a, a community where every individual has got power, where there's no weak individual in the midst, meaning that there's no individual that isn't being empowered. What skills do you need to acquire to be what God wants you to be? We should be about the business of empowering everybody helping them where they're weak, uh, providing strength, uh, uh, receiving their strength where they're, where they're strong. Collaboration is at the heart of the gospel. And, and I think as ministers, you know, the model that is thrown at us from many sources you know, of what successful church looks like has got to be resisted. I don't think there's any greater revelation in the scriptures apart from Christ apart from Christ, than the revelation that I'm a child of God. And if I'm a child of God and my brothers and sisters are all children of God, that revelation ought to feed how we do community. God wants to be known as Father. We're supposed to be brothers and sisters. It's meant to be a big family. In the same way, in our Baptist context, we do need each other. One of the most powerful statements that's come out of Ditko, uh, that the team in uh, Ditko really helped us with has been this idea of Baptists together. What matters is that we, our strengths are pulled together. I, I think we would, we would have more wins than fails. We do more, we achieve more, we gain more. And by that, I mean the kingdom. So, so I, 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 my, my appeal would be please, please, you know, Baptist churches, Let's learn from our Anglican cousins, um, uh, our Anglican brothers and sisters. Let's do joined up church. Um, it, it, it's, it's worth it. I, I, don't, you know, I don't agree with all of my Baptist colleagues in Reading, and I'm sure they don't all agree with me. But you know what? We love each other, and we, we choose to work together where we can. I would love to see our Baptist family full of confidence, confident in herself that this Baptist movement is one that can transform and change the world, unashamedly so. You know, I'd love to see us have a clear prophetic voice, quite different to all the other prophetic voices that are in our nation at this moment. A clarity, a Baptist distinctive, a Baptist voice. I'd love to see the Baptist movement speak to government in a way in which I think sometimes we let others speak on our behalf. I think, you know, we should be speaking. We, we've got something to say. And, and not just say it, and not just say it in collaboration, there's a space for speaking to power together as the church and the country. But there's also things we've got to say that are distinctly issues that we're challenged about in our spirit that have got to be articulated somewhere, somehow. I'd love to see, as I said earlier on, a resurgence in Baptist life around the Word of God. I think, I think the next great move of God is going to be centered and come out of His Word. I think it is going to be an extraordinary move. We've seen an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's brought us to a point. I would love the Baptist family to be at the forefront of the next wave of God's Spirit in the world. I'd love it to be a Baptist church that God uses to, to bring a renewal to our nation. Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that just be amazing? Uh, whether it, it came out of Sheffield or, or Cornwall, or, uh, whether it came out of, of Scotland or Northern Ireland or Wales, I mean, who knows? Um, it may be one of the young millennials watching this right now, the Baptist, that will become the next Prime Minister of this country or the one after the next. Um, it, it may be the young millennial watching this right now that will become the Surgeon General or head of the army. I don't know. But, but that we're called by God.
to be a part of transformation of this nation, that's an imperative. We need that confidence in our hearts and in our spirits, and we need to impart that to the next generation. Thank you.